All right, so good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to present a tool I've been working on. It really helped me with my data working group workflow, um, and I'm hoping it might be useful to other people. And it's called the uh, OpenStreetMap Hall Monitor. So if you're not familiar, this will hopefully help you determine uh, what it does. A hall monitor uh, is someone, a volunteer in a school who stands in the hall and essentially monitors it if something nefarious or, or bad is going on. They report the authorities, in this case, this guy with the vest here. Uh, so, a challenge we have with OpenStreetMap with Open is that users uh, can't subscribe to object updates, and either tracking objects or users requires some sort of manual checking, either running a new uh, query or scrolling through the history, something like that. So the opportunity here is that we can create a lightweight automated tool to scan these change sets and also notify whenever there is something that happens. So there's two basic things here. Uh, first is the base Python package, which essentially has a database of things to track, whether it be people, objects, or even key values. And then it pulls in uh, the diff files. It could be either minute, hour, or day resolution uh, from the planet server. And then it scans those for any events that might uh, be in the tracking database. And then if it sees something that uh, did happen, then it will log that and also uh, optionally provide a notification. And then also a second part that I've been working on is uh, sort of a web interface for this so you don't have to deal with the command line uh, to really uh, make it easier for managing the database and also looking at the logs. And then finally, uh, allowing multiple users to uh, use it. So. It's uh, easy to install through Python. You, you can just pull these uh, with pip, the, the two different packages there, create a database, and supply those variables uh, into Python. And then you can add something to track, and then there is just an overarching run program that does pretty much everything for you. So uh, one case study here, Pokestops, that uh, surged a little bit in popularity with, with people trying to add them to the database. and. Really, they're, they're just fictional things. So uh, what I had done is I had simply uh, added a tag here. If there was a name with something like Pokemon or Pokestop, then it would uh, email me. And sure enough, not long after, there were already uh, two cases um, that I did that. And so what it would do is it would email me and tell me essentially the, the change set, the user responsible, and what actually happened. Another example. Uh, edit wars, so that's something we have to deal with sometimes. So uh, I, I blocked it, I'm not trying to call anyone out, but just looking at a relation uh, that was contentious and had a lot of activity here. So again, this is just uh, the, the entry in the tracking database. And then if you look at the log here over the course of a few days, uh, many different people modifying the object and eventually it just being deleted. So every time someone had edited uh, this object, I got an email, I was able to check it and see what was happening. So there are uh, other applications you can think of, uh, at least from a, a data working group perspective, thinking about looking at people who've been blocked for some reason and right when they get unblocked, kind of just a proactive way of checking up on these users. Uh, maybe you've added, it a uh, added a bunch of objects in your town and you just want to make sure people aren't deleting it. Uh, or uh, if people are tagging objects with sources that really aren't uh, compatible with the OpenStreetMap license, you could do that, that sort of thing. So just uh, to wrap up, it's kind of a big brother surveillance for OpenStreetMap. You don't have to worry about creating a database initially of all the OpenStreetMap data and then comparing it. It just uh, leverages the ability to scan these diff files. And it's uh, still in its infancy, but I think it's fairly stable. And then I'm happy to collaborate with anyone or if you have any ideas for this to take it further. And with that, I'll take any questions. I, could it could it be set so that, for example, country book, country boundaries could automatically not be deleted or flag up if, if they were? Yeah, so uh, that's actually one of the things that I'm particularly interested in with this, and uh, I do track those uh, generally, at least the ones that are often prone to these edit wars. Yep. Or just mistakes. Right. right. Uh, quick question about IDs. Uh, have you considered Wikidata IDs as uh, one of the IDing concepts. Yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of the key that you add, you could add any sort of thing on there. Um, 
you can even add wild cards, that sort of thing. But yeah, that's something to keep track. So in case of Pokemon, uh, later on there can be like hundreds of people adding these things and uh, uh, how to distribute like these works among you and among community so that like other people can also contribute and it's not only one single person who is looking at all these things. Yeah, yeah well, uh, I mean, my ultimate goal would be to have something that everyone could just log into and do themselves with the tracking. Um, it hasn't been too overwhelming, and I'm, I mean, other people have been also looking for these besides me. Uh, but eventually, I would like to have a community tool that anyone could log in and add anything they want to track. It is possible to monitor a given bonding box to see the changes, let's say, in your neighborhood or... Yeah, I didn't, uh, that's not built into my tool specifically because there are a lot of others. Uh, I know Pascal has one that's like an RSS feed, those sorts of things. Any more questions? Okay, let's take our speaker again.